All right, I'm sure that a lot of you out there are familiar with this camera. Some of you might even own the camera. It's proven to be very popular for small cine whoops. Some people even attach it to larger drones with a small extension, which allows you to actually shoot the drone in flight. It has an 11.24 millimeter equivalent, 35 millimeter equivalent, uh, wide angle lens. So that's like super, super wide. The other reason to chat about this now is because with the release recently of DJI's Action 2 camera, it's worth noting that DJI kind of pulled a page out of the Insta360 book because the Insta360 was kind of the first magnetic action camera that we're aware of. And if you're wondering how that's sticking to my shirt, I have a magnetic lanyard on underneath, which looks a little bit like kind of a hippie pendant. Um, but it's great if you want to just walk around with this camera on, it could not be simpler to use, and it really produces really quite good results. So let's dive in. So I'm shooting this with a camera that is literally the size of my thumb, probably even a little bit smaller than my thumb. It shoots 1440p at 30 or 50 frames per second, and it all packs up into this little charging case, which also lets you access some of the controls and settings for the camera. This is really about the size of a Tic Tac box, maybe a little bit bigger, an AirPods case. But the point is, you can drop it in your pocket and you can take this thing with you anywhere. And that's why the Insta360 Go To is really, in my mind, a very, very cool and capable camera. Very stable horizon. Now your ears might have caught some wind noise on the microphone. We're going to give Insta360 a pass here because the footage is very stable. Uh, the camera has Insta360's flow state stabilization and watch this. I'm walking up a set of rickety stairs at a cabin in the woods and that's pretty smooth footage. I, I do need to fix that railing. Yes, thank you for reminding me. One other thing to watch out for here, we're gonna see that the highlights get a bit blown out when you're coming from a darker area to an area with really bright light. And we will pass on the cabin tour for today. And because you can just hang it on your shirt and because it's so small, you can kind of take it anywhere, in this case, to a ball game with my family, uh, and no one really notices that you've got a camera on. So for that kind of application, it's fantastic. This was shot obviously inside a car. We're right outside Boba Boy, which uh, apparently is a bubble tea joint, but some nice colors there. Of course, because it's a very wide angle lens, you can see a little bit of that distortion on the edge of the building but you do have the option of changing the field of view, so you can get a more linear look. All right, I know that some of you are gonna be wondering, yeah, well, what about flying this thing FPV? Okay, I have a confession to make. I am not the greatest FPV pilot, but I'm also not the worst. So what I did is I mounted it on this, which is a Beta FPV 95, I think uh, 95X, V3, I believe. This is the analog version. The interesting thing is that this came with an adapter for the original Go, and the original Go is slightly smaller. So basically, I had to just snip that, put a piece of uh, electrical tape on top, and it worked just fine. So we're going to hop in my backyard now and take a look at a flight. <laughs> Don't expect any wild tricks or flips because I can't do them. Uh, so I'm just going to give you kind of a nice mushy floppy flight around the backyard. But I think you can see here that it handles the colors and detail quite nicely. I do try to get close to a couple of plants and leaves uh, on your behalf. So uh, it's just kind of a quick swing around the yard. but. Really nice uh, saturation to the greens. That's pretty much what the backyard looks like. And yes, I did have permission from my neighbor to fly in their backyard as well. So just one more little dip down to kind of look at some plants. 
and then I think we're going to uh, turn it around and return to home before long. But you can see there with the sun dappling on the, uh, on the grass, it handles those highlights well, but those highlights are not as bright as what we saw earlier. And once again, if you look kind of on the top right of the screen, you can see a couple of spots where it is slightly blown out. I also do need to mow the lawn. Every time I do a video, I realize there is some sort of maintenance that I need to catch up on. And here we go. We're going to come up and do a big plop on the deck right about now. And for a bonus round, there's my crash that I almost recovered from. Oh, so close, so close, but no. And yeah, that was a really tall fence to climb. So how is it in low lighting conditions? Well, it's sort of okay. I mean, you can see a fair bit of grain here. You can also see a halo effect on the lights. But to tell you the truth, I think that is actually more due to my windshield than the camera itself. So low light, yeah, it's all right. But most of you are going to be using a camera like this during the day anyway. And it's incredibly small. I thought I was going to have a little more wind when I set this up, so it's more or less a static shot in my backyard just to give you an overall look at dynamic range and just color accuracy. So that's my backyard, which also needs to be cleaned up. I got to move those propane tanks out of there. This was shot using a feature called Time Shift, which is kind of like hyperlapse. It exported at this size. I'm not sure if that was my fault or just the way it is, uh, but I do like the look of that shot and I do like that feature all packed into a very small package. And here is a walk through the trees with that same feature. This one did export at the correct size, so probably my bad. The other thing that's kind of cool with this is because it's so small, you can put it on Insta360's little uh, selfie stick and fire it through really, really tiny spaces. So you're about to see a couple of shots where I put that to the test. Ooh. Holy cow, we just went inside a pumpkin's mouth. Come on, that's pretty cool. In fact, it's so cool, let's do it again. Here we go. Yeah, you really can't do that with too many cameras. And here's another one. The old through the hedge and back out again shot. Here we go. Come on, Mr. Bones. All right. Cool, though. And you really can't do that with too many action cameras. If you watch closely, you'll see not only my dog, but that he's wearing the Insta360 magnetic pendant. I did actually try to get some video with the camera attached to uh, Ranger's pendant, but it was just a little too jittery, uh, probably due to Ranger and due to the fact that the pendant was really flopping around. I'm throwing this shot in because as you can see, the sun keeps peeking through and almost flashing in a, in a blinding way. And what I like about how the GoTo handled this is that the auto exposure didn't really pulse. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm using the right technical term, but as you're probably aware, some cameras, the auto exposure can react so quickly that the entire picture darkens and lightens very rapidly. But this, I think in this situation, the GoTo handled it well. Plus, I happen to like driving on this road. The horizon leveling is excellent, both now and when I flip the camera back up. Okay, kind of a pretty fall day, and we're just going with the microphone on the Insta360 GO 2 for this session. Uh, but like any other action camera, it's really the app that unlocks the features of the camera. And the Insta360 app is really very, very intuitive, easy to use, and has a lot of features on it, including an AI-assisted editing feature. So if you want to quickly create a video with a music bed and share it, you can do that in a flash using the app. On top of that, there's the Insta360 Studio app, which will allow you in sort of pre-post-production 
to change the field of view, uh, change some other parameters of the video, and then export it for use with Final Cut Pro or Premiere. And to walk past my neighbor's Lincoln Navigator or Aviator as I head back to the Drone DJ studio in my basement. Are there some downsides? Sure. Um, I found that on a particularly bright day, and you'll recall I mentioned it earlier in the video, the highlights kind of got blown out. I was shooting in a dark area, relatively dark, under shade, but when you saw those spots where the sun was just like beaming down on the earth, they were kind of blown out. However, for the size, for the weight, for the overall image quality, it's a really good little camera and a fantastic option if you want to fly sub 250 or if you're flying a small Cinewhoop and you're not shooting for commercial reasons. If you need 4K, you'll need to go with something else. But let's face it, for most of us, we're kind of shooting, we're sharing on Instagram or other social platforms, and 4K really is not going to make that much difference when you're watching a video on your phone. So that's our take on the Insta360 GO 2. We think it's a great little camera for the money. I'm Scott Simi for DroneDJ.com.